Coach, on Big Noon, you talked about some teams around the country that got off to slow starts. Obviously, in the Big Ten, the two teams everyone talks about, Penn State and Michigan, getting off to slow start. And you talked about this idea of looking under the hood. Tell us about that. Yeah, I, I, I get amazed by when I listen. And, you know, the minute you lose a game or a team's not playing well, human nature is to start blaming people. And the first people in professional football who they blame are the players and then the coach. In college, it's ironic, first thing people they blame are the coach mm -hmm. and the player, which is the right thing to do, I guess. Oh, that's right, that's probably uh, right. But it's amazing to me, I'd sit there and say, oh, I hear someone say, because the team's struggling, that guy's a bad player in the NFL. Think about that statement. He's a bad player. No, he's not a bad player, he's a great player. He's one of the best in the world to do what he does. Now, he might not be playing well. Right. And same thing with college football. So you, you take a look at two historically great programs, the Wolverines and Penn State, and they're struggling. And the first come, well, they have bad players. That can be the furthest thing from the truth. Now, they might not be playing well, and I had the three qualities when a team doesn't play well. Number one was trust. Number two is dysfunctional work environment where expectations are greater than your work ethic. It's called entitlement. And number three is selfishness on a team. Your team, it's an I mentality versus a we mentality. That's why teams struggle. Let's go to if an individual's struggling. You know, I, when I was a coach, and I learned this from Earl Bruce, he made a comment when I was, a, I was 21 years old. If any coach ever in our staff says this player is not good, you're fired. I would never, I'm, I'll never forget that. I was 21 years old and say, wow. <laughs> First of all, if I'm a player, I'd love to hear that. Right. Second of all, that's true. They, we brought that player to the program. We recruited that player, so don't, don't tell us the player is bad. That was my rule for 17 years as head coach and player. And sometimes I'd have a coach come in from another program, and I'd hear something like that. And I'd, I'd call the coach in my office and say, listen, that's one, and we don't get a second. You don't ever say that that player is not good enough. Okay, so do you ever go under the hood about a player? So someone isn't playing good, what, what, what do you do? Yeah, this is a psychology, my psychology degree. I just always think, why does a player not playing well? Let's figure that out. You know, an uh, elite leader is a cause and effect expert. A bad leader says, well, he's not very good. And the louder you get, all you're doing is telling everybody you have no idea what you're talking about. So you're cause and effect, why? Number one, and it's the same with the team, number one is trust. The trust is the foundation to every relationship. We're, that's the way we're created. If I don't trust you, Jerry, this is gonna be a really bad show. If, if, there's, if I don't tr the players don't trust me, uh, I don't trust the player, or the players don't trust each other, you got a bad team and the player's not playing well. Number two, and this is really cool, your skill set is not being developed or it's not being utilized. Now, I used to always challenge our coaches, what are you asking the player to do? Right. If you're asking him to be a great edge rusher and his hips are tight, what are you doing to improve his hips? You know, we have the best trained coaches in the world. Are you doing extra work to get his, your individual drills aren't helping this player become good at the skill you're asking him, or you're not utilizing him. I've had coaches put a, you know, a five foot eight corner trying to cover a six foot three player in bump and run coverage, and is that the player's fault? The player is that much shorter than the guy. That's the coach. You're not utilizing the man's skill set. Same thing if you say, okay, uh, I've heard coaches say, well, he doesn't fit our system. Don't ever say that. Change your system. Change the system, right. You know, that'd be like Dwayne Haskins. Dwayne Haskins could be more different than J.T. Barrett. Dwayne Haskins, if we ran Dwayne Haskins like we ran J.T. Barrett, you'd be a fool. So we didn't run him. We, we adapted the offense to what? Dwayne Haskins. Dwayne Haskins was a pocket passer. And then the third one, and this has never been more apparent than now, 2020, and that's the person's in conflict. Something's wrong. That means there's an alcohol issue, there's a drug issue, there's a relationship issue, there's a, one of his family members are sick. You know, there's something, we're all human beings, where's the, where's the humanity of that coach to find out, so okay, you're not playing well, let's find out. Do you trust me? Do you trust our program? Are we utilizing your skill set? And that's gotta self-evaluate there, but then more important of all, most important of all, this player is an 18-year-old. What's going on in your life, man? What are you doing at night? Who are you dating? Tell me about your mom and dad, your family situation, and if you dig deep enough, Kerry Combs is, by the way, probably the best I've ever been around. If you dig deep enough, lift that hood, you're gonna find there's something somewhere holding that back, this greatness of this young person. Help them, there's called counseling, there's called love, there's called the great coaches. What do they do? They don't blame a player. They find out the solution. Mike Thomas is probably one of the great stories in Ohio State history. Dig deep, you know what we found out? We found out there were some issues there. 
We got him fixed. Keyshawn Johnson and his father got deep in that. We got him right, and now he's the highest paid receiver in the NFL. A player comes into your office and says, I don't trust my mm -hmm. position coach, or somehow it, it comes to that. Sure. Can you, can you regain that oh, trust? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I won't share a name, but uh, one of the great stories that, uh, of our 2014 season was that happened, and we got it fixed. It took a lot of work, but it was it was a messy conversation because we're humans, and we had open dialogue, which is, by the way, the best way to solve problems, have open dialogue and be transparent. And the words came out, I don't trust my coach, and the coach was sitting right there. But we got it worked out. They end up, to this day, having one of the greatest relationships and he became a captain of our team. So yes, you can do it. It's very hard, it's very messy. Sometimes there's tears involved. Sometimes there's very personal conversation involved, but you know what? That player deserves that. Interesting stuff. The thing I always tell people, people and teams are living organisms. Every team's different, every player's different. The great coaches and, you know, I've been fortunate to be around some of the very, very best. The best coaches aren't the best strategy people. What are the best coaches? The best coaches care deeply about that person. And I mean, what will they do to help that player? Anything. It's good stuff, coach. That's great stuff. Thanks. As we continue on the show, Justin Fields in the Ohio 